Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, I'm playing in my British Landmarks book because I have a bigger um, Around the World colour book. Um, and I found this one. I thought I'd practice in this one because it's a bit daunting doing a big a big thing. So I thought I'd practiced and um, over the weekend I was uh, confined to um, <laughs> a premiere in um, room so I decided I would take this particular book to pieces where the stitchings were so that it could lie flat so I have pulled out this Snowdonian National Park and I've googled so I can get some really gorgeous colours um, and I've had a bit of a mistake I didn't put white on it I put a cream on it so I'm not happy about that but it's a practice um, and as with um, this <coughs> this weekend there was snow on the hills so I'm actually going to put the white in I don't know whether just to leave it as tiny amounts of snow I haven't decided I like the fact that that's snow. I think I quite like that. It's snow, and then we've got these kind of this kind of thing going on with the, the colours and the screes and the fallen fallen bits so that's quite good but I've left that white there so I've got that white in so I can leave that there so I like the colours of these hills here um, now they're a bit kind of I'm just going to have a quick just a quick look for the ones with the snow on because it looks completely different See, that's what the snowy ones look like. And I didn't know if that was snow or not. I didn't think that was snow. So that's quite nice. Oops, again, you've got the building there. And we've got the little bits of snow and then the green and got the rocks here. It's not much of a reflection though, again, not happy about that, so I'm trying to match it up <coughs> as best I can, because as I say, I don't have an imagination. I think that's the one actually I saw. Yes, I like that one, because that one has a little bit of reflection around each stone. So I quite like that. I like that a lot, so I could do that one. And I like the trees as well, so I'll keep that. If I keep that there, it might keep the light off. Oops, no, makes it worse. Yep, I'll leave that out of the way so I can see it. So we've got kind of the pale hills on the backgrounds, the pale greys. So again, I do need the colours, if there's colours. So you can do it two ways. You can either go over the colours first um, these are the kind of pale olive colours um, and I'm just going to do something first because I haven't done this yet so um, that might be okay. Once I've got them in order, I was going to take a photograph of them. So I think we can have a little bit of kind of the green here. It's kind of. And remember, we can only put one lot of colour in one space. That looks like a deep, deep one. That's a different coloured mountain. Um, oops, sorry, bark alert. Again, that can be the paler one as well. 
yeah, sorry, it's hubby's home. There could be some barking. Apologies. Um, in fact, it actually looks very much like this is the drawing. So we could do with a little bit more of a darker colour. So again, if I look on my pencils here, I know just to go slightly darker here, and I'm going in a darker direction. Sorry, there could be a bark alert. Oh, was the minute I press record. <laughs> the minute I press record. Um, so, it's kind of a little bit going on here. And here. And maybe a little bit on the top there. So we can see the snowy bits and the other bits. But we just need to give... It's a bit darker on that side. Maybe a bit lighter on this side. That seems to be quite dark, and this is a bit paler, this is a little bit darker, maybe a, a different kind of a green. Okay, that was too olivey, I think, maybe. Um, <coughs> again, this is a bit paler colour, very subtle paler colour. And get some of that in there. So it's going to look the same. Um, I'm going to have to actually stop recording because um, it, it's no good when anybody comes in. <laughs> so apologies. Um, apologies for that. It's just I don't think it's any good doing it when there's anybody about. I don't know if I'm going to get this kind of, no that one's going to be in, this one might be here. I'll do some blending in a second. Um, you can use as many colours as you want but the one thing you can't do is put colours on top of colours and as long as you remember that you should be fine. So I just want a little bit of dark. I don't know what that is there. Oh, that's that little. That's a bit of a darker one here. So it definitely looks as if this is the actual area. Just a little bit of green up there. Then here, there's quite a lot of this darker colour. To work its way up there. A little bit of grey down there. And that's almost going into a blue green, so we'll put that one back. And we really want to look at blue greys. Um, just pop some water in it, I just made one. I'll cut you two. Let me just put. And again, I can follow this now because I've used the colours. And you can do it without your thumb. You're just putting little marks of colour. Paler colours here because this is the top. I don't think we had any snow, I think it was kind of just pretend. And then I'll just, yep, put that across. Just on there, darling, thank you. And so we're trying to get as many different colours next to each other. So that when we blend, it's going to be quite nice. Um, so I did want a bit of a... Um, 
indigo is the best colour but it's a little bit dark but I think we get away with it where there isn't anything else it lends itself to some the contours I think but we can kind of darken it up with this now it's a bit squeaky because this is a soft pastel one oh Nigel little man wants to go out please Nigel, little man wants to go out. Well, just put him on his lead and... If you put him on his lead and open the door, you don't have to go outside. You can't let him out because he runs off and that's how he got run off run over by a lorry. <laughs> Bless him. So, I don't really want too much of that to go over there, really. There's a little bit of something going on here. And what that will do is imply that these are in the same kind of distance. You don't have to take him out, just put him on his lead. And then I kind of want a bit of darkness on that one and that one, I think. Tiniest bit. I think I'm going to do that. I think we'll forget that snow and put that as dark shadow. So we've got all this colour just kind of... <laughs> we've got all that colour mixed in there. And they are really scratched, just kind of scratched in. But I'm trying not to get any, keep any white um, because what will that will do is it will just give us the. In fact, I'm actually going to use this one as well. In fact, I found in, an indigo bold, which is even darker. Um, and I'm going to actually put. You can see there's going to be a difference, and this is why Derwent brought out. I know why they did the set now of three shades because they gave you basically a professional palette of soft pastel, and people didn't want that. People wanted, you know, one to one to seventy two in color. So you know, it's that's what they got bit squeaky. Um, so quite like the fact that I'm going to really deepen up these areas here. That's in shadow and that's in light. If you look at it, all the mountains have all got shadows that way, so this one's got, got to be lighter, so I nearly made a mistake then. I don't think I'm going to be kind of I don't want too much, just a hint to push some away and bring some forward. So these should be forward, but I think and oh, so I keep using the thumb. The thumb will not work. So um <coughs> We don't want them too dark, we just want a little bit of something. So push that into there. So I'm going to get my, my blending tool. So I have a lot of blenders that are... Now we could experiment with this because this one is for reflections. This softy one here. And I was hoping for a harder one, but what this will do... It's a softer blender. So you're getting some really nice 
kind of softer effects. And these work better with and you want to work in the direction of the reflection. If it was water it would be down but this is sideways and I'm not cleaning off any I'm not cleaning off I'm just using them as they are so pastels are very instant they're very quick uh, when I was playing with oils you could spend weeks on an oil painting months in fact there's one guy that spends several years on each painting um, so this is a soft what I would call a soft blend but I think we might get away with it I think it's going to be kind of looser and a bit more artistic more more kind of uh, impressionistic rather than the detail stuff so if you can do it once you're going to get a really nice effect as soon as I'm get going to pass this particular mountain range I'm going to clean the blender because I don't want all this dark mixed in this is kind of the the end of the line so actually this blender is quite good I've never used it before so it's actually quite nice this one it's giving that lovely soft blend and literally stroking it because it's very soft so we want to use it here because this w this particular set of the hills were on a par same distance apart uh, but paler colours Um, so you can be very uh, impressionistic, expressionist, you can be very good with this. So again, I'm just going to put this on here and stroke it several times. And then really kind of make sure it's dry and there's nothing on there at all. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to go to my little one. Let me have a look. I have a little wedge, a soft wedge here. So I'm actually going to go for this one. And we can blend these colours together as well. This might be good in a forest. So when I did the Hagrid one, they, that would have been softer. Um, Again, though, these are barely holding on for dear life because they're not really blended into the paper. They're just blended with each other. So I quite like that crisp. That crispness there, that's quite nice. If we can take that up to there, again I can't do that with my other hand, but right handed. I can use the thumb a bit. You can get that blend up to that line. Now obviously if you're doing your own, you don't need to get it exact. You can kind of manipulate it as you want it. So again I'm gonna again it's quite filthy now, so I'm gonna stroke that away. Oh, thank you, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> so we've been there, we've been there. So let's go down this way now. So this wants to be a little bit paler because we've got the sunlight. Um, I wish they put all those lines down there, but never mind. This is a colour book. It's not a piece of artwork as such. It's just me playing about a little bit artistic. I keep forgetting I'm doing it with my right hand actually. But So 
again on the top here we've got the shadow so again I'm going to clean that because I like that to be there and then we've got to take that over there now the only good thing about this is we are we actually can you see some gorgeous colors there all mixed together um, I've got to take all that off it breaks my heart to waste it but I have to waste it because I need the sunlight to touch that side so it's got to be clean and again I'm using my right hand and I'm left handed you're just literally doing a very 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 soft stroke that's all you're using just touch that up to there so we've got a bit and if we want a bit extra see here there's a very very light bit there so I can put a touch of a highlight on that ridge. Um, the only thing I will have to do though is turn that sideways <coughs> and use the edge here to kind of just touch the top and the f oops it's a bit too much actually the finer I could do it the better Not sure I like that, but let's have a look. Push all the bits away carefully, very softly, because it's very, very soft pastel. Is this? I think probably a bit too much. I think we could possibly use that little soft one was quite good. And again, not used to playing with these, so it's good practice. But I didn't want to use it on a bigger, on a kind of a bigger one. So I've got some green smudge left on there. I'm actually going to put that back up. I could smudge it back up. There's a lot of colour on here. I actually quite like that. I like that one. I think that one, I might keep that one because that's kind of a lower one. So I'll leave that one. So this one's blending. Um, I think I might use the bigger one actually. You see where I've brushed? can see where I brushed the pastel has kind of stayed on the cloud because that's touched it but it's fine this is never going to be perfect because of that horrible line there but so we'll take the big brush the big um, this is a number 10 artist line and these are a bit cheaper I found in a shop in Glasgow um, <coughs> Because what you do is you don't look where the pastels are. You look, you look where the um, you don't want the pastels. You want the and oh, the brain's just gone completely to mush. You don't. You want um, the clays. These these are used for for blending and moving and making features for clay. And getting smooth areas of clay. That might be a little bit too too light, uh, but actually I quite like that. I think depends what happens with the next layer. Um, so this wanted to be a little bit kind of greener and browner, and that did as well. So we bring this one in, um, which is a bit a bit greener. And that might make it be a bit better. See, it's better to start from top to bottom always. Um, I think it might be May Green, this one. Let me have a look. 
I think those colours look a little bit fake, but I actually quite like them. Um, and I'm going to take this down to here as well. Oh no, that was a paler one. That's the wrong one. That's that one. So this is the green one. This is the green one. So I've made a mistake there, so I'm going to have to get the eraser and take that off because I don't like that. But because I haven't blended, it should come off. If I'd have blended it, there would have been a stain, but because I haven't blended it, there isn't. So saved by saved by the blend. I'm going to blend with this little this little one actually because I quite like it. It doesn't give such an even. I think we could possibly put another bit of a colour in there as well, just to kind of break up that kind of. Not much, but it's just kind of a little bit. Much of a muchness, shall we say? So I just give that a bit of a a blend, um, and this is grass, so it really wants to be kind of blended up and down. But we do want the blend to be together, so you've got paler areas and darker areas. can take that highlight off there in a bit and the little house as well. I think that wants a little bit more. It's a bit darker. I think we need a little bit more of something into there. Um, I could put the green no, because there's no, there isn't. Oops, there isn't a reflection because we don't have any trees here now. Whether we put one in or not is another matter. I'm looking for a kind of a just something with a bit of kind of paleness, just a bit of more colour maybe, just to kind of bring this back into. Are not quite in the dark dingy colours. So you clean my little blending tool. And now we mix that orangey with that green, it gives that just a little bit of a difference. It's it's a different kind of green. It's not a fresh pea green. It's not grass green. It's kind of scrubby, backgroundy scrubland kind of green. It's not bright. So it needs to be quite pale. So now we've got some shrubs, uh, some bushes rather than trees. We want some quite kind of deep greens. So we've got a forest green, so that's quite nice. Um, so I like to start darker. Um, they're not all the same. So I think the tree light -like ones I'm going to do tree light -like colour and then the other ones. And then we probably have a little bit of a. Well, we need a. It's not that kind of a green, though. I think it's probably this kind. Um, maybe a little bit. It's still probably the wrong green, this one. So I might actually mix three greens together. I've just got to remember that I need to leave a bit of a gap. 
Um, so I need kind of a an olive green as well because that's kind of a well there might be some dried up bracken in there or something it's not all going to be lush green um, and again this is kind of a little bit of a Possibly slightly almost a yellow ochre. Is that a yellow ochre? Yes, it's a brown ochre. This one. So, so it's almost that colour. So we'll just uh, put that one into there. And again, I might as well use this little one. Uh, in fact, I might actually use, I might be, so be bold and start using the other ones as well. So I um, need to put the brushes to one side. Oh, they're here. They're all up here out of the way. So I've got three. So the grey one seems to be a lot softer and the actual white one seems to have a bit more about it. So it's called a taper point number two pastel shaper force line and star pat. There we go. That's what that particular set is and that's the same. And they were the ones from Cass Art, I think. I'm pretty sure they're the ones from Cass Art. Yeah, colour shapers. And they were actually with the pastels they were. So I'm going to start at the top there. Um, I still think I might have felt better having the harder shapers. Um, it's a lovely softer blend. Um, but I'm more... It's a bit freer way of working and of course I'm not used to that so... That's probably why. Um, and if you're just using the tip, kind of going to the, the palest first. Um, oh dear, that's not a good sign at all. Oh my, 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 my. So. Um. Right, here we go. It's quite nice to leave a bit. If there was no lines there, you'd leave a bit of that to kind of really get it. Oh, hi, Terry, TT. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm having a bit of a play with my pastels. My pastel pencils. And I've destroyed another little tiny book, but I wanted to work on a flat surface. You could never get in this crease. Um, and you could never have your hands nice and flat if you were in a colour book. So... Um, and I think I can get this one back together again. So I'm actually quite enjoying these little thin, these little soft ones. But I'm not sure what it's going to do when it comes to kind of... Uh, now I like that pastel colour just to up there, just to give that another kind of edge to it. I'm not sure about this one, I think it's too pale these three want changing and basically they're these they do look fake because they're kind of they're in the background and that's in sunlight so that should be the same colors as here uh, and then blended up so I'm going to take I can't remember what colors I use there if I look um, probably 
it's, it does need just a little bit of of, of green just to kind of get it to kind of something like that even if it doesn't have any of the dark in it um, I think we need a bit of a bit of ochre I think as well a bit of that ochre I like that ochre ochre is always a good one in a color scheme in a landscape ochre is always very very good because ochre does something to greens ochre is wonderful to play with greens yeah, this is this is actually a green I would guess with an ochre in it it's got orange in it it's a green made with an orange that's how to explain that one and that's how you get your olives so I'm going to use the bigger blender see what that does see if we can get that nice movement going so I can't wait to start the pictures of Alfie and so I can feel a little bit more artistic works better if you can bend it and squidge it rather than slide it um, but you won't be can't see very much of what I'm doing if you do that. So again, just titivate it up to that line. But you've got a lovely, nice edge on there. That looks slightly better. It looks like it is actually connected. <laughs> it doesn't look connected before. I might put some little dark bits in it, just some little bits. And that was the dark. I might have got a dark olive. I might actually just put a little bit of dark olive, I think, in there. Just in odd places I think and then I'm going to just give that uh, just a bit of a something it's kind of lost its way and the one behind is kind of lost its way as well it's got to be in front of that one but way behind the four one so it's again uh, I'm getting quite I'm getting quite like to using these little wedges actually, the little they tend to kind of give you a nice movement is the best way I can describe it. So that's kind of a bit nice to use. Um and again we've got that little bit of movement in that one because this one's going to be a different color because it's going to really knock it forward um, so I've just got to remember to keep cleaning these little these little shapers so this is a set that I got from uh, the colour shapers pastel set kit um, and there's a little thing at the back that says the taper point a flat chisel a fan brush and a blender brush I haven't used the blender brush um, it's a little soft brush I haven't used it yet but I think they're for more professional but um, I'm quite surprised with these I'm actually liking them I didn't think I would and I do like the big wedge one as well because they're a bit softer so they're possibly going to be easier for me to use um, but you want to kind of keep keep these kind of clean especially with that blue indigo it's quite a dark colour right so we think that might have worked a little bit hi Diane welcome to Bunny's Designs anybody else that's popping in having a bit of a play um, I think I might actually kind of like a little bit of this in the bottom of these methinks I might like a little bit of that I've been listening to some old because I haven't slept very well for a week or so I've been listening to Lord Peter Whimsey with Ian Carmichael uh, from um, I would think the early 70s maybe and um, 
I'm uh, <laughs> he he has quite a posh voice or accent, and then he'll 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 say a vowel completely wrong, and it's like I kind of like that. So I've been, it's very strange, but I'm I'm very much like a chameleon when I go anywhere. If I'm there for more than two days, I I pick up the accent and just start talking like it. I've no idea why. Um, I think it has something to do with my childhood, because <laughs> uh, I had to. I went to a rough school, so I had to be kind of a bit rough. But then when I went home, I had to speak correctly. And I think that's probably why I've got a bit of a split personality. So sometimes I have to talk like this. And sometimes I try to speak correctly. But it's quite funny. But if I if I end up in Glasgow, I want to go in the Glasgow Glaswegian accent. It's very strange. And if I go to Ireland for four days, I just come back speaking with an Irish accent. It's I'm very much a chameleon, have to say. I quite like that. Yeah, it's given me a bit more depth. I like that olive colour. That's kind of really earthy kind of olive colour and I think we can give that a little bit of this here um, but one thing that we have got again is the shoreline's got a kind of a bit of something going on and the other thing I'm going to do is put <coughs> the tiniest bit of my favourite um, blue and I, I actually prefer my soft ones. I actually prefer the soft ones. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this dark not not too much and not everywhere. Um, just hints of a little bit of a dark area and that's indigo and I love that for shadows absolutely adore that for shadows um, so I thought actually I might use a little tiny a little, I don't really want it to go in in kind of any particular direction I just want to kind of smudge it around a little bit so it, if it's part of the tree it goes up and if it's part of the thing it comes down Um, so you could put at least 10 blues and gre greens and dark blues into these trees and then blend once. Now I've been quite lucky, it's letting me add some colour to this which it normally doesn't. And this is because this is not going into the paper. This is sitting on top. But this is probably what you would do if you were working with pastel paper. Um, as here. It'll be better when we can see um, Alfie and talking of which. <laughs> no, and sometimes you, you won't get. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's a ridge, but I'm going to try and get some colour in, uh, into there. Um, and these little wedge ones are quite nice because there is a bit of a direction with them. So you can kind of get your mountainy, <coughs> slidey areas. I do apologise, we have a little monster. So we want a kind of a... What do we want now? That's... <coughs> oh, sorry. That's kind of a... Um, We've had the pea, oh, pea green there. We've got kind of um, a green, but it's a yellowy green with stones and shrubs and things. So um, I'm going to the, I think I'm going to go to the ochre colours and just have a quick look at my, the yellows. I know I have a couple of very pale, um, this one is called zinc yellow. But if we look at it, it could be a highlight of a green. So um, there seems to be a bit of a pea green in there as well. But there's a couple of yellows. The zinc yellow in 
Oh no, that isn't too. So these think it does actually look a little tiny bit green, but it isn't. So we're going to go back to the greens because we have quite a few greens. So the palest ones. is almost like an emerald green. Well, there's definitely not emerald green there. We want uh, pea greens and soft pale greens and yellow greens. So this is quite a nice colour. So we've got some rocks. So in little areas, in fact, it's more of a straw colour really, actually, than a green. But we'll just put a hint of this green in. Um, and I was right, it is more of a an ochre colour definitely and some kind of I'm going to do those the same trees Let's look. Um, it is a bit of an ochre colour so you just want some dots and there isn't much between this. It could almost be the same drawing actually because if you look it's far too coincidental. Um, and that's 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 a lovely pale green. Uh, this is the softy green. I want to put a little bit of that on there. You see it's not taking anything now. Nothing's happening over there whatsoever. It's completely saturated with colour. So I've got to be a little bit careful because once we've filled this with colour, we don't have any going back. So I could do with a bit of an ochre colour. Brown ochre, I think that's the best one, especially on the top of here. It's a brown ochre. This little area here. Alfie, come here. Alfie! 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 Sorry, he was doing his um, dance. <laughs> he was doing his dance. My cold coffee, bless my hubby, bought me. So let me see if I can actually stay in frame. She's not doing very well at the moment. Oh, I've just knocked my camera completely balmy. I wonder where it had gone. So it's about right. So what we're going to do now is a few more dots there and then I think I quite like these to be I don't I don't if I want these russet, I think I'd like these to be kind of greeny, but they're not green. And that's going to be darker too. We li I like the olive colours. I do must admit, I think the olives would be quite good. And the other thing with the olives is they will tie everything together. This is kind of a, a little bit little bit darker and it needs to be a little bit darker when it's behind kind of rocks and things so we can brighten these up in a bit um, now according to that it's a shrub but that looks like a rock so whether they've drawn it wrong I think that's a rock um, So all in between here wants to be a little bit greener in this kind of inner slope. 
and then that one's a bit quite green so I might just blend that I'm just going to have a quick look for some paler a greener colour so I'm going to put some more greens in here that's more shrub I don't really want shrub I want to do all the to do the grass first and get all that kind of correct and then put the trees in so the idea is to touch every little bit of colour and then you don't have to worry about anything that we could just do with a little bit of bright colour here um, I think I'm going to do those that colour like it's actual rock. So it just wants a little bit down here. Um, they look like rock as well, so we can and then I think this is sh kind of shrubby. And then right at the water's edge I'm just gonna put um that was shrub yeah and this is actually trees as well as that is I wondered what it was it's actually shrubs so just see if we can get a bit of green into that there It's going to take a little bit of colour, but it is quite saturated that. So we need to kind of blend. You see, it's just completely. It's having a lot of difficulty get clinging on, is that? That should be fine because it doesn't have any colour on it. And that should be okay. So I've got. <laughs> Terry says, Hi, Alfie. He's back under my feet now. Probably don't know what he's dreaming about. Um. I'm going to use this one again because I actually quite, it's a big mountain, it's not like it's a Didi mountain, so let's see if we can get some nice movement going on. Maybe the little one probably is, is better. I do like this tiny one now I started using it. Again, that's quite good. Soft blend. So we can kind of get this colour going to give a bit of depth before we And the colours will blend together, so we haven't got any harsh dots. If I can blend them out, we don't have any harsh dots. I've left some because I want them to be stone, but apart from that, I'm trying to get rid of all that harshness. So these soft blenders are quite nice for that. So it's quite nice just to scratch a little bit of colour in and then kind of, uh, I can go over that because I can take that off if I want. So I want the little tiny pointy blender to really just take some smudge 
green. That was really kind of really tiny, that. Um, but some of the colour book pages are kind of very, very, very kind of tiny areas. This is a small book as well, you know, this, if this was in a bigger thing it would be a lot better. So let's put a little bit of grass in there. Um, I need to put some darker there. I'm just going to finish this kind of... Um, I know I want some... before I blend it I want some proper green in here because these are shrubs. They're going to be a little bit different to the other shrubs but it's going to be shrubby, is this? I didn't realise that, but yeah. I'm gonna this is kind of a little bit shrubby, is this? But it wants to be a little bit different because I've got to be a little bit of shrub there. I'm going to leave that, I'm going to make that into stone, even though it's uh, it's drawn as a shrub, it's not a shrub. And then we can just, little circular motions. That seems to be quite nice for those little shrubs. Well, they're not shrubs, they're actually tree, tree clumps, but from a distance they look like shrubs. And if we want to go, I can blend with that. I actually don't prefer that. So when you use a, a harder blender, you get a better blend. But if you want kind of a rougher blend, so you've got a bit more texture to things, it's not blended exact, then you want the softer blends. So that's the best way to describe them. Um, so when I'm blending I like to have I'm not very creative so I'd like to have everything blended extremely well but this has taught me to be like no leave that because it looks like there's something else going on there instead of drawing exactly what it is uh, I can leave a bit to the imagination so we've got a bit of grey granite stone coming in here so I need to go to the greys and we'll take out some grey um, and these these were a bit kind of grey as well but it's a warm grey, it's not a cold grey um, and then there's kind of a dark they're probably a little bit too cold those greys, let me look at my other greys up here There's, there's kind of a lot going on there. They're a little bit warmer, some of these greys. And then at the bottom, we've got the dark. We've got the dark indigo, because obviously that's where the darkest is. And we've got that gorgeous indigo to come back up and, uh, and give us some dark areas and be a little bit in here as well. And then, and then kind of hopefully going to get a little bit going in here and just double check. Oops. Come on, don't be silly. Right on that page. So we've got some blacks at the top coming down and areas going up. Just put a little bit of, of shadow on that, a little bit of highlight on that side though, because 
So by the time we've blended this in, and again I'm going to use the little wedge because I want those lines. I want to feel that that rock is 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 kind of slanting down that way. And I want a very soft blend so we can see those ridges and those dark crevices wherever they are. So this is quite good. I've never done it like this before. And again, it's it's a pencil. You wouldn't think it was a pencil because I'm using it. I'm just using blending tools and a bit of scratching. So you could tell suddenly though this paper's had enough now. I can move all this. It's definitely not wanting any more pastel attached to it. It's had enough. Because it's just shiny pastel paper. We just knock that a little bit. And we've got some stones there, but I think I could darken those up a bit later. So I'm just going to tip this gently. Nothing much came off there, but... So I'm going to use my... Oh, I've got seal here now. I love this seal colour. So I'm going to put... We've got a building behind there. There isn't one on there. Um, I'm just going to put... I love this seal. It's a warm... I wonder if I could put it on that. Yeah, I'm going to put it down there. There we go. It's down. There isn't particularly a dark one there, but there's a light one. So, and with no reflection, so I'm a bit cross because that reflection would look good, but there isn't a reflection, so I can't really put one in if there isn't one in there. So again, if you push, you can see this does not want to be there. to create a bit of an edge there. Just a tiny bit of an edge. So uh, I think this is going to be probably a sky blue. But I will just take this off here. Just even though I've blended it, I've blended it softly, it will come off. So I didn't know if I wanted the darker one. Normally it's lighter. Mm, it is, it's lighter. So I'm going to take it off. I did get it to a lighter place, so that's okay. And then this one wants to be lighter on the other side. So I can take that little tiny one off there. And I just want to take that off there. So I can just give... Um, bit of a shadow on that side. Just pop these back. I know where they go then, otherwise I get into, into difficulty because I forget where they are. brush all this off and I actually do that on the floor so 
So I don't think I can get a good reflection because I've got the black lines. So I think as much as I'd like to put the reflection in there, I don't think I can. <laughs> So it's going to have to be um, it's going to be difficult because it's going to be ripples and we didn't really want ripples. It's not it's just not dark enough to get it's just not dark enough. You get those mountains here. They would come out to here with those mountains, but you, you get all this here. It would be just completely mirrored. The next good thing would be to actually draw this myself and colour it in myself, because I actually quite like it. <laughs> I actually quite like it. I didn't think I would, but I do. So. That wants to be darker, that wants to be paler, and then that just wants a hint because it's got to be a lot paler. I'm going to pinch a bit of that off there and put it on the roof. But that edge has to be... Um, let me just use that little paintbrush, see if I can use that paintbrush. That's got to be completely... that colour, and then I want to... I need a bit of darker now, so if I pinch a bit of this off here. You see, it becomes a watercolour, and you can use it as a watercolour. So I've coloured in that little tiny house there. So it's going to get me very cross now, because I want to do the reflection, and it's not there. So we're using the same colours, but this time it will look more like this one, which was... Um, come on in your own time. So it would look looks more. Oh, it's the same. This is the same one. Look, and this is the same place, but a different angle. Oh, sorry. So we've got kind of lots of little ripples. So we were doing the colours sideways. So you need some blue. Do with maybe some white, white here and white here. Again, I don't normally use white, but I've got about three whites, and then white there. And then I want my blue. I'll use a grey blue actually. I think that grey blue is going to be quite nice. So we're going to have to use a little bit of green. I've got to get a hint of something here, even if it's just a hint. It's got to be a bit of a hint of something. And I don't have a clue what I'm doing, so... <laughs> um, so we wanted that other green here, so you can kind of mirror what's going on here. And then... Um, That way it'll be that way, won't it? Yeah. Um, that's going to be green. Just a hint of this. And pale grey. what we're going to do is we're going to go sideways we're not going to go that way we're going to go sideways because we have to go sideways because that's the way 
of everything. It's very green, do we? So, if you were doing a reflection, you would draw those exactly the same, but instead of blending this way, you would get the larger blender and very carefully blend that way. That will give you the perfect reflection. But because we've got these black wavy lines in here, we can't really do anything. So, as I say, I am making this up as I go along. Um, and I don't really like it. I don't like some of these. Can we do, how did we get rid of those last time? No, I don't really like these. Um, I don't know if it's because of the pastel or I don't know why. should have probably done each individual one as a ripple yeah that blue's not very nice either I think that's a little bit better I think the softer pastels are nicer actually if you want to be bit more suggestive instead of being exact that blue one is that little bit too so too hard there it's looking more of a scribble so it should get very cross in a minute because I don't like that I would have preferred to have put the reflection in but uh, So this is indigo. This is different indigo and it behaves completely differently. So we'll just put a little bit of this across. And although I'm holding this with my thumb, it's absolutely so. I've got that one. I'm just going to put some green, and then I'm going to um, sorry, I'm going to put some blue. Um, I'm going to want a nice kind of a bluey blue. I think we'll get some blue in there. And I'll put this blue in the sky as well, I think. And just see if we can get this a bit lighter, because I really don't like this at all. So just see if we can get a little bit of something nice going on. It depends what kind of day it is, really. It depends what we need to kind of... But this is definitely... those black lines I just don't like them but we don't really have a choice we're gonna have to go with them normally you could get a lovely soft blend for your water but I don't like those let me try the little little tiny one see if that's any better might be slightly better. So I, I think the softer pastels you are quite nice with the softer. Um, they're kind of a little bit better. But this is not the way to do water and reflections at all. But I 
can't cope with those black lines. <laughs> Slightly better. Let's see what that does. Might want to be a little bit darker. Well, it's not too bad at that side, but it's horrid at that side, so I really don't like that at all. Um, it gets very kind of blue up here, but of course now we're changing to a different... Uh, we, we're looking at something completely differently, so you're making it up as you go along, and as I, I have no imagination whatsoever. So, um, I kind of really don't like this, because if you're, doing so, if you're using a reference, you use a reference, if that makes sense. If I was making it up in my head, that's fine, but... I do not have an imagination. And as my aunt told me for 50 years almost, until I fell out with her, I am dead from the neck up. So there we go. I do not have an imagination. So I can't imagine what that looks like. And I absolutely hate that, so I'm not doing any more of it. <laughs> No, it's okay from there, but you can't. I can't make it up. You cannot make up a river. It either looks like a river, or it doesn't look like a river. If it's a river of lava that's coming out of your ears and you're making it up, that's fine. But I'm not. I'm drawing Snowdonia. So, um, yeah, that's going to be failed. I really don't like that. And I don't think I can get much of it off now. I don't know, sorry, healthy if I want to use tea. Um, it probably actually would look better once I've done this. Because you'll get the ripples of the water, but really, can't, I can't stand those lines. They're getting on my nerves. It's why you want to just draw wavy lines across everything. Um, so, um, that's an epic fail. <laughs> but I like the idea that I was playing with soft, soft blenders rather than the harder blenders. Um, but we need to see if it actually stays on or not. It's not bad. It's not too bad, isn't that? It's not too bad. Um, I think I like that blue. That blue's going to have to go up here because it's down here. So we're going to have to have a bit of that. Is it that blue? A bit of that blue. And that will just brighten that sky up. Just a touch. And we'll blend that round. It's actually got some quite nice qualities to it. So I do like the soft blenders, they're growing on me, so that's good. Um, but I'm probably getting fed up with colour books. Because the drawings, if the drawing isn't correct, it drives me insane. This is why you can spend a week on a drawing. If your drawing isn't right, your painting will never look right. doesn't matter what I do with that, it will never look anything like, because the drawing's not right. <laughs> um... So, there we go. It reminded me of the Lake District where we used to go a lot, so kind of, it pops up to haunt you. Right. There we go. So, clean that. So they come off very clean. So I do actually like the bigger the, the bigger ones and the squidgier ones. Um, I think it's like paintbrushes. You can get a bit obsessive and end up with hundreds. Um, but the little ones have grown on me, I have to say. And they're easier on your thumb. So that's quite good. And sorry about the chain. <laughs> it's feeding time at the zoo. Um, so 
it doesn't matter if I shut that because I'm not really bothered. I'm going to pop that back in its little book. Um, so we said Snowdonia, which I think was up here somewhere, wasn't it? Wales. There we go. So that's the train. So there's some nice colours up there. There is some nice colours that would be used somewhere else. Um, and the Angel of the North. And Devil's Bridge, Aberystwyth in Wales. So there's going to be a lot of places with a lot of colours. And some of those really nice olive colours are going to look quite good. So if you tap that there and there, it, it's almost gone back to its normal place. But it means I can I can take them out of my flat. Uh, oh, that's Windermere. I, I grew up on Windermere. So again, you've got on a Windermere, you've got those purple heathers. So you've got some really nice deep rich colours. It depends on what type of year you want to do it. Um, I thought that would be easier. I thought I would find a good a good thing but of course the, the painting was wrong. So Yes you could. It, it, that's a quite a nice one. You only need about six lines. Yeah. Um, yeah you've only got you, you've only got one line that way, one line that way, a couple of little mountains, and then you've got three or four here. And it's a good composition as well. So even that's why it works in natural a natural beauty, because it's, it's naturally perfect. It naturally works, because it's um, if you were drawing it and making it up, it would be a good composition, because you haven't got one mountain there, one mountain there, or one in the middle you've got a group there and you've got one here and you've got sweeping lines so it works as a composition as well so yeah you could I could do that again I was just thinking about my my drawing book but it's down I don't know where it is because it's huge is my I, I made this huge drawing book then I gave it to my daughter and she couldn't carry it and now I don't know what it is It should be about somewhere. I know. I know. I've seen it somewhere. <laughs> I've seen it somewhere. Just bear with me. Do a second. See if I can find it. Because <laughs> it has a lot of paper in it. I put, I put the sketching paper in there, and the other paper I put in there was wallpaper paper as well. Wallpaper liner. Oh, you're behind me. You'll get trapped. Alfie. Oh, Alfie, it's covered in dinner. Alfie's covered in dinner. Are you covered in dinner, Alfie? <laughs> I've nearly just run over his little paws. We haven't had an Alfie cam, actually, have we? We haven't had an Alfie cam, have we? Um, I'm trying to find this, this silly book, which... Oh, Alfie. He's just... Everywhere you touch him, he's covered in... <laughs> wet dog food <laughs> so he's got his ears covered in it I'm just trying to find my little book oh I can see it but I can't get to it yeah that might be a job for another day might actually use my sketchbook up that I made yes I think so but the problem I had is I didn't think I'd be able to draw anymore because I draw really fine no, really, really fine detail. I have to draw every single little thing. I have to draw it. Um, I can't make it up. Um, we were taught, the first thing we, we drew in detail was a sunflower. And we drew every single seed in that sunflower in its exact place. Yeah, it was a big, huge painting that. That's a picture of that sign in Indian ink. So, yeah, I probably would do, yes. Yes, thanks, Karen. I'm sure I will. And that's to do with the pastels. Because when you're watercolouring, you've got to be a bit kind of freer. And I think that's why I'm getting bored with the books. 
because I want to do my own art but I didn't think I'd be able to but I might be able to with pastels so again it doesn't it doesn't bother me in the slightest when I'm coloring these in because I'm making all the colors up it's when it's any re anything that's reality it gets on my nerves because you know you know that Snowdonia um, if you have the colors um, and the Harry Potter ones get on my nerves actually because they're not drawn <laughs> they're not drawn right that sounds awful doesn't it um, see this one there's this is in a different place um, most of them are in a different place very strange yeah I might have to start doing my own and then you wouldn't have the black lines you wouldn't have any black lines in it then. That's what I tried to do with this, to get rid of the black lines. Um, the only ones I thought were really good were these, and I thought they actually were a very good standard. Um, the Ultimate Travelist colour book. Actually, no, I, t I take that back. These are these are drawn very well. And this is the amount of detail you need for a... For a I'll just pan out. So these will be better because um whoops I don't know what I did there I'll stop that particular video because it was an experiment and I had a play so I quite like it but I actually hate those lines across the <laughs> just drive me potty um so thanks thanks for joining me this is uh, the great british landmarks um and uh, with pens with pastel pencils which actually worked quite well so I was quite impressed and some very soft blenders which again was a new thing so thanks for watching <laughs>